Hello, it's Sarah. I am claying today. We're going to make one of these under the sea votives, okay? And I want you to use what you have. That's always my theme, right? So that being said, I just pulled out this bin. This is my clay bin of scraps. So I have kind of organized it by color, but I don't always. Like I just put it in a baggie when I open it. Um, so I'm looking through to find under the sea colors. And if you guys have seen Nemo, Finding Nemo, right? That's what it's called. I love that movie. Uh, under the sea or, you know, Ariel, whatever that one is. There's so many colors under there. So on this one, what I want you to grab are some blues, and we're gonna, I'm gonna try, and I haven't done this in a while, and my memory is terrible, but I'm gonna try and do like a swirly um, background. So I'm gonna try and mix the colors to get the background. So if you have a few different blues and some white or whatever, um, and the same thing goes for the seaweed, but you don't have to. So use what you have. If you have one color of green, use what you have. Um, and I'll show you how I did that. Now, I happen to be, I watched a few videos last night of different um, ocean themed Palmer clay things. There's one young lady, and I forget her name. I did it before bed, but she made a whole coral reef. And um, there's so many different, I haven't ever really seen a real coral reef. Like, I haven't been to, like, Australia or anything. Um, just on TV. But you can make it whatever color you want. And then I put uh, mica powders over this as well to get it to have shimmer. So I want you to use your imagination. Um, like, I have a feeling I'm going to make my seahorse purple. I don't know why. I just want a purple seahorse. I probably, I don't know if I'll use the dolphin. I'm going to be doing, um, so yeah, so gather any colors that you have, you know, seashell colors, starfish. These are like little mussels. I love that just to have the contrast of the black. Um, and any under the sea, you could put a mermaid on yours. You could put whatever your imagination sees under the sea. Don't put pollution. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> All right, so what I've been doing so far, I just wanted to share, I have a pasta machine, and I don't show this to you guys very often. I'm very abusive with my tools as well, so I have bent this out of shape to a certain extent because when I put my clay in, if it's not already conditioned, which I do a lot, I use this machine to condition my clay. So this morning I've been taking... I have all of this already preconditioned. A lot of my scraps that I know that I want to use, I've just used my hands to warm it up. And that way, when you put it in the machine, it's not hard and it's not going to break your machine. So that's just what I've learned from doing it wrong. Um, so gather up some colors. And then I use a pasta machine because we are going to want to make sheets of clay. So I don't know if, yeah, you can tell. This is super thin. I mean, this is probably on the thinnest setting that you can get. So uh, it'll go a long way, um, but you wanna get it thin and then we're just gonna, and you don't need any type of adhesive. Um, in, in my case, I didn't use adhesive or it would be um, a liquid, liquid clay of some type. You're just gonna lay that over gently and try to ooze out your bubbles and then we're gonna cut holes in it. Um, so, but you, you really do kind of need a pasta machine. I just, I can't, I don't know. It, maybe you don't. Maybe you can just roll it out super thin with a, um, with a rolling pin. Uh, so you have, and this is just from, I think, I want to say Michael's. It's Amico. And you screw it down to your desk because I, like I said, I am rough. And I will put a hard piece of clay in there and I really need to roll it, roll it out. So, um... They're not very expensive. Use a coupon. So you have to have that. The other thing I would suggest, again, is, and I mentioned this yesterday, is a mold. I, I just got this one yesterday at Michael's. It's by Craftsmart. And I haven't used it yet. 
so uh, it's a silicone mold but it's got lots of different C under the C images so I have another one this one's by usually there's a name on here I forget I think it's Amco too Amico and look how dirty it is I mean I've used it up a lot and I have like I said the dolphin there's a whale a bigger sea turtle so I'll probably use some of these but I think I want to stick with this one um, it has an anchor one two four five seashells a turtle a seahorse and a fish and a uh, starfish oh another big seashell so we'll see um, you're gonna need a few other claying tools I definitely would suggest you're going to need a pokey tool, so like a ball tool. It doesn't have to be for clang. You could just use your stylus, any, any little ball tool to put texture. Um, also an X-Acto knife or just your blade. Let me get my blade out while I'm thinking of it. So this is my old X-Acto knife, so it's not as sharp. But I'm going to cut, we're going to roll out the um, green clay. And we're going to cut those little pieces of seaweed. So you're going to roll the sheet out and then cut them out and then put them on. Um, a rolling pin. You can always use a rolling pin. Uh, this is just my claying blade to get it off the surface. So stuff like that. I'm not going to do a lot of texture. Texturing, texturizing, whatever you want to call it. Um, because the mold is I'm having a hot flash no lie no lie oh boy my glasses are fogging up mm. look how cute dollar store it's my iced coffee um not really gonna texturize maybe just the sand yes it looks like I did use it on the sand so I have a little texture plate but you can just use like I said the texture um, a little ball tool or something but for the most part it's smooth and you're just gonna let the clay uh, mold add any texture like it does look like I put some lines in the seaweed and I did not antique this which I probably won't antique it I love the bright color of the clay and I have a feeling this these are gonna be even brighter I'm gonna make a purple like I said a purple I may make like a bright yellow goldfish instead of because um, I'm not going to do the um, what is that called a jellyfish I just feel like this was in a class it's not rocket science right I could do it but I don't want to get in trouble I get myself in trouble sometimes what else um, so okay so there you go I, I went over this stuff yesterday with you a little bit I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna continue to, oh, one more thing. So the, the uh, other, other things you can use, so I may do this on this one, I didn't do it on my previous ones, but I have this, it's a nail kit, nail art kit or something, and there's just little metal findings in here and they're tiny. Um, I just pulled it out because I've never used it. Also little bits of mirror, I wanted to share that. So if you wanted to do a little bit of coral or sand or whatever is under your ocean, you can put a piece of mirror underneath some clay and then put some holes and texture around it and it just adds something else. So, you know, I pulled them out. Um, also bling, I have a lot of different crystals. I've gotten most of these on clearance or on sale when, when they've had them. These are from Hobby Lobby, the bigger ones. Yeah. Um, I'm going to condition the yellow. These are charms. So I had, when I've done my mosaics, I've used charms because you can bake charms. Anything that's metal, um, so wire, metal, glass, things like that, you can put in the oven. And they'll be fine, but there's like a little manatee. They're just they're just silver, so they're not an um what is it called enameled or anything. But there's a little octopus. I think I might put. I don't know. I might want to put my octopus on there. Uh, this was cute. These are gold though, gold tone. 
because I had this pin and I thought I could take them off this pin and use them because they're small because I'll show you in a minute um, and then any other little like these I don't know I think they're glass these um, little sea turtle beads they're beads I think they'd be okay they're I don't think they're plastic so I could probably use them and then these are just little mosaic um, beads I guess they're beads yeah they have holes I don't know I just thought they look super cool and I could embed, embed those in the clay as well. I only have a couple of them. And like I said, probably won't, but it's still cool to pull these things. Okay, here's my circle um, cookie, cookie cutters. I, I don't know if I'll go this big on the smaller ones because I'm going to do a really small one. And then these. These I've never used. They're called um, Millifloor, I think they're called. But I thought they would look cute. I have some white ones that I might be able to embed in something. Or even in the coral, I could put some orange and red ones. I don't know. I probably won't. I don't know. It's whatever I feel at the moment. Now, I had all this blue clay. I bought it, which don't do that until you check your stash because I have this bag of blue. I love this dark, dark blue. I'll probably put, I'll, um, I'm going to condition some of that. And then I have white, definitely going to need white. So, oh, oh, and then this. This is what I was talking about on the um, video. I have these tiny little eyelets. And just for a pop of color, I don't know, I love, love, love the um, copper. But I have all the different colors of that. I have a couple different sizes too, but I was going to use these little ones. So I'll put them aside. And that's about it. All right, I think we've covered all the tools that you might want to. And then again, use what you have. Use your imagination. Yours is yours. This is not, you know, you don't want to have it just like mine because I what I've learned over the years of crafting is um, it'll never be just like mine. Yours will never be just like mine because mine is mine. So make yours yours, all right? This is one other thing. I showed these on my video yesterday. I have these three uh, pieces. Obviously, you can tell this is the biggest. This guy is huge. That's the difference. So I'm not working this big. I'm going to minimize it. So that's why I think this blue mold is going to work so much better because the critters are smaller. So I'm excited. All right, so I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to get everything ready to go and we're going to start making our ocean. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, I pardon the interruption, but I just got uh, a delivery. So this is an um, iWatch band. I got it from Amazon. It comes with a little uh, cover. This one I just got like at Target, I think. I haven't, I don't have very many, but I'm, I just ordered two, and this one came separately. But what I liked about it was, I'm just cleaning my hands a little. It has the uh, rose gold buckle, like the all the um, hardware matches. And it's just like a light tan color for summer. I have the pink one that it came with. So, if you don't care about this part, forward fast. But you just have to push this little button, and you can slide the um, band off. And which side do I want to put where? Let's see. Oh, this is just like a regular watch band. It's not like, usually the uh, iWatch has like a, a little button thing that you do. All right, so which side do I put where? I'm going to put this one here. What the heck? So let's see. And then you just order the size that... Um, this is a 38 millimeter, I think, because like Joe has a bigger one. He has just like a bigger face. So I will wear this. It just makes it more summery, I think. 
Um, the black is pretty, I mean, I like black. I wear black a lot. Cool. It's much more blendy. Well, I'm very pale, so anywho. All right, I like it, but it has the rose gold buckle. That's what I like the best. All right, we interrupt this program. And then I could put this on there, which I didn't. Oh, this is rubber. Oh, I thought it would be hard. So, like, if I wanted to change my watch to, like, a silver watch, maybe you could do that because you get a silver one of these. Oh, like silver and black or something. Anywho. All right, let's get back to crafting. <laughs> So, Kirby's outside too, so I'll probably have to get her. Oh, I see her. She'll be, she'll be done in a second. Um, what, I, what I've done is, um, I had all these scraps of blue. So when I've worked on other projects, you can see like even this sky, I did the blended blues too. So I have a lot of scraps, and I just um, rolled them out. And this is going to be, oh, she's back. I have to go get Kirby. This is going to be, so all, look at all these. And I didn't think any of these were the same color. I mean, I could definitely, let's see, these, two, these three are kind of similar. So I could roll them together. But I'm not, I'm going to keep them all separate. And um, I'm not going to use that one right now. Anyway, this is the thing. I, so I'm going to do that in a minute. I'm not going to do it now because what, what we can do is just use these clays that I just bought. I told you yesterday I got sky blue, peacock, um, turquoise, and then I added a little piece of oh teal pearl. And then this, blue, just blue. These are so soft. Like I took this out of the package and it's that soft. So you have to be careful because if you the more you blend it it's not going to show the mix of color oh kirby's coming in you want it to show like this to show the different colors and if you keep blending it and blending it it's just going to mush together into one color so that's what i'm nervous about because i can i tend to over blend or you know get a little excited so all I'm doing, like these are right out of the package, and this is what I mean by conditioning, conditioning it. I'm just letting the warmth of my hand, and this is just a regular uh, ceramic tile that I like to work on. I think I bought it at Home Depot, just separate. So I'm going to try and use five different colors, and I'm going to work on, hmm... I really, really want to do this little one, but I'll probably use my, oh Jesus, my scrap clay. I'm going to do this one, the one that I want to make for Joe. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make snakes and I'm going to make them, um, like I'm going to, they're so soft, you guys. Oh boy. I'm going to make a couple of each color. So not just one thick one. And look, I haven't done this in a really long time. By the way, all I used was one square, like, or I'm sorry, rectangle. So one section of each clay is all I used. So I have plenty left. So this can, if it gets muddy, whatever. All right, it is what it is. I'm not gonna stress over it. This is fun. And if you're not having fun, don't do it. And I don't even know if I want all these colors. I'm, I'm going to look at it and see what I think. Because why do I think the ocean has so many colors? I don't know. I think it does. When the sun hits it and, you know, it's all different. So let's see. I'm just going to put... Um... Do I think the ocean is that color? I don't, really. I might take out, I'm going to take out this color. 
which is ironic because I think that's the one I bought the most of. No, the peacock. No, that's this one. Anywho, let's see. I think I like these colors. So I am going to put them together. I haven't done this in a really long time. Gail, if you see this, Gail might know better than me. But I'm going to do this gently because you know why it's so soft but if there's air bubbles in there I'm not making a cane this is not making a cane I'm just making a snake and then I'm gonna twist it oh boy is that the color of water <laughs> not really all right and that's it and then I'm gonna use my rolling pin and roll it. Uh oh. It's so soft. What? This is so soft. That's crazy. Do you think that looks like water? I think it looks pretty. I'm going to go with it. So learn from my mistakes. If you don't like this, if it's too green or too whatever, change it up I think maybe you might just want a light blue color so I am going to pick this up I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to put it in the pasta machine so I'm going to start on a little bit of a thicker all pasta machines have like a different um, my, uh, mine starts the thickest is the lower number so I'm on like a number three right now I wish I had more of this color. Um, go down to a number five. Actually, this looks like a. Now I'm gonna go five. I might want to fold it. I'm gonna fold it. See, this is where I'm gonna run into trouble because I'm not a. I'm not perfectly sure. And see, th it's doing this because my, my rollers are wonky. I have wonky rollers because I'm abusive to my machine. So I'm getting thinner. I don't know if I love it, but it's whatever. I think it's cool. It's kind of stripey. So you know what? I might want to blend it again. This is the trial and error part. I don't know so I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna see what happens because I might just have totally over blended it and made it look completely weird I don't know what I did but it's so soft I like that better though I didn't like the stripes and I even like this side so you just keep going like this is a number seven so I'm gonna go to the nine. This is the thinnest. And put it in. Oh, and it basically just ripped because this is so thin, this clay. It fell apart. But I'm going to put this side in. All right, I'm going to do I'm going to do one. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put it on. I see Oh dear. I see a couple bubbles, but I'll push them out as I as I get going. And I'm going to lay this on because I do like it. I like this side a lot. I love the contrast of this color. I'll go this way. Put the light color on the bottom. And I'm going to make sure cuz I'm just going to fill in, but try not to get air bubbles as you lay it down push the air bubbles out but I'm excited because I I it's better than it's not as bad as it could be if you know what I'm saying it's definitely colorful and I like it so I'm not I'm, I'm not upset so just get it. See, this will stick to the glass. And then we're just going to fill in. Put your hand inside of it. 
and let's see which side I like. I really like it. I do. I'm excited. But we are going to fill in. Let me see if I should go through one more time just to, and I'm on the same setting. I just want to straight, oh, damn it. You have to feed it through or it's going to um, rip. See right there? That's just from the, um, and here's the thing. We're going to cover it up with so much other goodness. Don't worry about it. Just get it on there, and I'm just going to put that, I'm going to cut that all nice and straight. Um, I don't know, because I could, see, this is such goodness right here. I'm going to go from this side. It's all goodness. You could cut it so that it's it matches up better, which I think I'm going to do. But that is such goodness. I don't want to, like, lose it. This is a kind of a little bit small. Let me figure out which side I like better first. I think I like this side. So this is the, actually the hardest part, and it's not that hard, but it's the hardest part because I'm not, I haven't done it often enough. I haven't done this in a really long time so that I haven't been able to troubleshoot it enough for you to tell you how to fix what you're doing. You know what I mean? So you're just doing it along with me. And it is good to watch the videos first so that you can um, be aware of my... Um, trials and tribulations, but I'm going to cut this. And just know that like nothing is perfect, but it will look super cute when you're done, which is the most important thing. Um, because this is so thin, you don't have to worry about thickness when you're baking. I mean, we're going to put on the little critters and stuff, so they're going to be the thicker part. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. It doesn't really look like the ocean. So if you want to play around more with twisting, I don't think I twisted enough. Um, but I was really nervous because I know myself and I tend to over, I'm very hard on things, so I didn't want to over, um, do it and like just blend it all out and not have any, um, different colors. So what's going to happen is all these lines that I'm making, like the connection lines, I'm going to put stuff over it so it's not a big deal or I'm going to cut a hole in it. So this is all going to get patched up. I just want to put something up here to hold that together. Um, what else? Because I'll, I could go off, oops, push your bubbles out as you go. And your finger can just smooth things out too. But I'm um, going to take this piece. Hmm. I need to use it for the bottom. Look at that. See, I wish I had more experience with canes and stuff because I don't. I don't know what to do. So this is what that looks like. I'm going to fold it and blend it one more time. Losing a lot of the light blue. But it's a cool technique, isn't it? Once you, if you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> All right, I'm feeding this in. Look at that. It's very cool. So I just have to patch up a few things. 
I think I might... Hmm... I have like goobers stuck to my pasta machine, I think. I have to cover it because it blinds me. I'm going to cut a piece of it and put it around here. See over that light blue section? I'm just going to put this. I kind of like the jaggly line it made too because it's just giving it texture like that. It looks like sand or something, you know? So don't worry about this being perfect. We're going to put so much over it. And look, at it blends right in. The Sculpey 3 is super soft. That's, I haven't used it for a while. But I like the colors of the blues that it had. So work with what you have. But just know that like it's soft. So be careful. Because I'm so rough. I don't know what it is about me. I'm not a gentle person. That's why I'm working on myself. You can always change. You don't have, I mean, some people say, oh, I can't change. You can. If you want to, you can. Um, and I would like to try and be more gentle. There are times when you should be gentle. And I want, would like to be able to be gentle. <laughs> so, like even that dark blue piece right there, I like it. Alright, so we're getting there. So I'm going to go off camera. I just don't want it to, it's a, it's a long project. There's a lot going on. I'm pushing out these bubbles down here. But what do you think? I think it's going to be gorge. It's different from what I have, but I'm going to cut so many holes, and I think I want to do this little one. I'm going to do the little one, too, and I'll show you how that comes out. But look at that. That's going to go on the bottom. What a ripoff. See what if, you know what it might be smart to do? Use a flat edge to just put it around so that you're even at the top and then you can fill it fill in on the bottom I like that idea better so see how doing a couple I should have probably done one before I filmed the tutorial so that I could troubleshoot you know but sometimes I think it's nice for you guys to see me do it in real time that's what I love about real time videos um, because I need to see it too. I don't always understand things if you just tell me or if I just read it or, you know, I need to see it in action. So that was good. I like that. And then all I have to do is put a bottom on and there's going to be sand and everything down there. So that worked really good. I like that. And then you make a straight line. And you can take off, well, there's not much to take off where I join them together. This is so soft, I cannot say how soft this is. It is softer than a baby's butt. I don't know if a baby's butt is as soft as this. Anywho, what I'm, what I'm saying, I keep repeating that because be careful because we're going to be denning this up. So by the time it goes in the oven, we could distort this quite a bit. So just be careful. See, look, every time I touch it up here, I'm squishing it down like it's moving from the edge. I had it right up to that edge. All right. Look at that. I did that one. I'm super psyched about it. It makes me happy. Okay. So I'm going to go off camera. Um, see, I ran out of those colors. See, that was dumb. 
that was a little bit dumb uh, <laughs> because I need to fill in but I could just put it's the bottom I could put a flat I could put whatever color like this color on the bottom it's fine I think I'll do that um, and I'll use this for this one and I'll patch it up well I may as well keep the camera on I'm gonna do this one and patch this up I'm gonna need a little more Sarah dang it so just FYI maybe blend a little more clay than you think you're gonna need because it's just better safe than sorry not that it's a problem because I will just make some more I'll figure it out and like I said there's going to be sand along the bottom so uh, most of this will get covered up I want it to go this way though And it really squishes out. Really blends together. Looks kind of, I don't know. I'm going to have to cover that. But So yeah, if I could have done this um, with one sheet of clay, it would have been great. So I think that might be... Um, a good idea to like make make enough of a mix that you can cover the whole votive without patching it but if you have to patch patch it's all right sometimes the accidents or the unintentional things turn out the prettiest so just let it happen and don't fight don't fight it just be with it and um, see how I keep I keep I just want to keep pinching so we're gonna work from holding the inside a lot but I think it's pretty I think it's pretty this one still needs some help Cause I gotta get up to that rim. Maybe I'll just push it up there. I, you could always take a piece of blue and make a rim. Like it's the, um, maybe like the ocean. See, look what I did on this one. I put a little bead around the top. I kinda like that. So you can cover your mistakes. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And I'll just pinch it down and I probably had the same issue on that one. I didn't like the what what was happening at the top. So I covered it with a little bead, like a, uh, a snake of clay to make it nice and even. And maybe I'll use this color. I don't know. I like this color, but I don't know why I just didn't feel like it was meant to be in that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is cut some holes in this. I want to go off and make it nice, though, first. I'm going to smooth everything out. I don't want to take too much camera time doing that. Then start to think about what colors you want to use for your fish. I've already decided that I'm going to make this little fish here I'm gonna give them pink fins and an orange body so to do that you want to put I'm gonna try it I've never really done a two-tone fish or anything but start picking your clay colors and and getting them conditioned so that you uh, they go into the mold nice all right I'll be right back all right I'm gonna do that again I have one more votive to do 
this will be I'm gonna make this just a part the part one covering the votive with clay and I'm gonna leave the part that I kind of messed up and I'm gonna do it again so this is similar in size to this one but it's definitely bigger than this one and I'm gonna try and cut now the only thing I did differently was I took one piece of a block of clay but I did two pieces of the light blue because I wanted to um, and these are I'll tell you the colors teal pearl that's this one this one is and I ran out of it so I think it's just called blue and they're Sculpey 3. This one is called Sky Blue and Turquoise. Turquoise Sky Blue. Now, so I added a little bit of the Sky Blue because I just wanted to see a little bit more of that in here. I don't know. Maybe I don't need more. But I think I needed more clay regardless. So maybe I should... I don't know. I'm going to try it again. And you want to roll out your snakes. I think I'm also going to break them into more pieces. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do double or triple the strands. I don't know guys, this is just, I've not done it enough to know perfectionately, perfectionately, that's a dumb word, but I'm just trying. This is so soft, it's just crazy. So when you put this in your pasta machine, um, hold it. You have to feed it into the pasta machine because it's going to break. I don't know guys. I'm trying. I really just hope I have enough clay to cover it because I didn't really personally I'm not pleased that I patched it. This one, I think I could, you can easily do it on a small votive. So for the bigger ones, you might have to patch it. But I like the idea of starting at the top, cutting a nice even line, and patching as you go down. Because that way, it'll look, I'm going to use this too. I'm going to keep adding. And then we're going to twist, and I'm going to twist it pretty hard, and then just flatten it. So this is what it's going to look like, basically. Then I have to feed this into my pasta machine gently because it's so soft. And I might fold it over a couple times, but we'll see. The one thing I also love is adding a little bit of pearl clay. This is called teal pearl, and you see that little shimmer there. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to hope for the best, and I lost a lot of the dark blue. The dark blue is underneath somewhere, so I'm going to fold it. I don't know if I should have folded it. Got to go back up to a wider... This got really blended out. And I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to put it through again at the same. No, I got to go down a little bit. I have to cut it. It doesn't fit in the pasta machine, so I'm losing all that blue. going smaller 
meaning thinner. Now I'm starting to feed it through, make sure it doesn't break. So I'm really holding it. I kind of like this side better. Oh Lord, this is trickier than it looks, guys. That looks pretty. But see how I got so much more light blue this time? So I think I got to try and do this. Uh, it ripped. I was I was not paying attention so all it means is this kind of hung over the back and it didn't it didn't get fed in onto the um, rollers but see that looks oceany to me this so I kind of like the back let's see oh dang it look it's getting a little bit of muddy on there I'm gonna fold it and I'm going to go with this, I think. Let's see. I'm feeding it through. I like it, though. It has to go this way, though. I like this side better. It's so sticky. All right, I'm going to start putting it on, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect them vertically, or no, this would be horizontally, but you know what I mean. Like I'm putting the stripes on horizontally, but I'm going to connect them. <clears throat> and I think I'll let it go to the bottom like that. And then I'll just start patching, I guess. And I'll cut the top off at the end. I'm going to put this through. Make sure it's on its thinnest. because I could use this piece. I love this piece. But it's so different from the rest, so I think I'll just stick with that.
it's a lot harder than it looks, I guess, huh? One's super easy though, so that's that's a good thing. Like even if it's overlapping, it's still blendable. This is an um, a round votive, so I think this one might have been the straighter one was a little easier to get to go on but just go from the center and still got to push those bubbles out we can cut some off blend but I definitely like only having at least the seams going vertically than having like a bunch of little patch marks Right now, I like that. <laughs> you know, that's funny. One thing about me is I definitely have opinions, like strong opinions. But as soon as I hear or see something different, my opinions change. I'm not, I mean, it depends. It depends on the subject, obviously. But I can get used to things, which is good. You got to be flexible, right? What's it called? Go with the flow. Got to, ugh. This clay is so soft. So um, I'm going to cut that off too. I could have cut this off. See if it comes off. instead of having a big overlap there. Makes it a little smoother. All right, one more piece and I should be done this one. And see, we have enough. I think it's better to make sure you have enough I'm going to use all these to fill in my other guys. And I'm just going to use them, and we're going to see what they look like at the end. And you guys can use your own judgment, um, what you think you need to get the... Oh, I love this piece. I just love this piece. I'm using it. I love it. I do, I do, I do. I don't know. Do I? <laughs> I got to use this because it's part of... Uh, it looks more like the rest of it. So I'm going to use this. And then you just cut. Let's see. Cut it straight. And then remove that and this. And then you can have a little bit more of a, um, a flat or a, a, an even joining area. There we go. Air bubbles are tricky, so just try to, don't forget about them. Cut this. all over me.
I'm going to put the little feet on the bottom too. I like that. That's really cool. I don't know if it's a bubble. Just making sure it's joined. There's no cracks. It's so soft. A couple air bubbles here, I can see. And you can pop them or you can push them to the top. Sometimes you can just push them out the top. See, that air is going right up the top. Boop, got it. So. It looks like a globe. Doesn't it look like a world? But it's gorge. Look, whatever. I don't know. It didn't it didn't do what I was hoping it would do. But it did it it did it did something, didn't it? It did something. I'm just gonna use um all right, I'm gonna go off camera. Actually I'm gonna come back with a part two. Alright, so this is Hit and miss, covering a votive with clay. And like I said, I haven't done this in a long time. The idea was to get some striations in it like that. And I was doing a, a class when I did this one. So she was telling us what to do when I did it. So I followed directions pretty well. But I don't remember. Um, I wish I did. I just have a very, very bad memory. And so I'm assuming I didn't twist it enough or something, you know. So if you guys are disappointed in what this looks like, do it with one color of clay and you'll be fine. And then you can use mica powders or do it with two colors of clay and just, you know, I mean, play and use your imagination. But there is no wrong, okay. I'm sure this is going to look super cute. It's not what I intended, all right? I'm going to admit it. I did not do it right as far as I can tell. I mean, as far as that is concerned, um, I still think it's gorge, though. I still think it's very pretty. Like, I'm even loving these little, it almost looks like mixed media marks on it, right? The green down here, come on. It, it's really cool. So, I'll be back with a part two and we're gonna create we're gonna keep creating we're gonna cut the holes and then we're gonna start to make our seaweed and our critters all right thanks for watching